Well, it was really interesting when the district board members came uh, and they actually spoke with us. And we, when we actually told them that they uh, were going to try to arrest some of our people this morning and they, they called the CHP on us, uh, the board members were really surprised at that and they thought that was a real problem. So it's obvious that the board doesn't support that type of action and uh, we were actually in fact correct uh, in our uh, willingness to actually stay out here and stand up to those uh, types of directives. Uh, we have a right to be out here and we are here. So I think it's great. We've had great turn turnout today. We're going to be speaking to the board quickly and uh, it's going to be happening soon. Uh, it sounds like the board might be uh, softening their position right now. Uh, because of this type of action, it shows that when we stand together, uh, we actually can get some stuff really accomplished. So um, I think today has been a good day so far, and we'll see how the public comment goes. Okay. The, one of the issues that you've raised here is that the, uh, the uh, bridge is trying to take away the current uh, uh, health care for the retirees. Uh, can you have any comment about that? Yeah, well, I have, I have two things to say about that. One is that, you know, when someone retires and they're uh, told that they're going to have certain benefits, uh, it is just, um, you know, it is unwise and it's also just cruel to change someone's benefits when they've actually retired. It's one thing, um, it's one thing to hear about benefits when you get hired for a job and you're told, these are your benefits. But then once you're retired, you're on a fixed income, um, and then they say you're going to change your benefits, that's a huge problem. The other thing is that our uh, legal counsels advise us that's also illegal for them to actually do that. And that's actually a breach of the vesting rights for our retirees and for our current employees that have actually earned those rights already. And so we've actually given a letter to the district stating that effect. And if they do uh, continue in the direction trying to ch make these changes to the retirees' health care, we're going to file a charge with the Public Employee Relations Board and challenge that in court. Thank you. Another issue here is that the, uh, the bridge has been steadily raising their fares, uh, I think at 5% a year, as well as uh, the tolls and the charge on the bridge. Have they paid anything like that in terms of raises to the members? No, well, in fact, uh, the way the bridge operates is that uh, they purposely manufacture a deficit every few years. And once they uh, raise the toll rates, they go out of the deficit and they have a surplus. But in terms of uh, the public doesn't want to see a public entity having huge surpluses, so they purposely run a deficit. And then during those defi deficit years, which are in fact created, they come to the coalition and they ask for these massive concessions. Uh, the, the actual documentation they gave us across the table, their own financial documents that they gave us at bargaining across the table, states that in two years they're no longer going to be in a deficit, even with no concessions made by the coalition. So we know that what they're asking for is above and beyond what they actually need, and they manufacture this situation every year. Um, and so we want to take part in supporting the bridge and supporting the district and making sure the finances are in good shape. But we also can know when they're reaching above and beyond. And if you look at what they've asked for from the bus drivers and the ATU contract, it's nothing compared to what we've had to uh, give up in recent years and in this contract year. We've already made $1.8 million in concessions at the table, and that's not good enough. And that's well above and beyond the $800,000 a year that they have that they want to ask for in their 10-year plan that they've published. So we've actually gone above and beyond, and we've been told at the table that they are asking for these concessions based on principle, not based on financial need. And we're not here to talk about principles. We're here to help out the district based on facts, and we want to do something that's fact-based and equitable to help solve the district's problems. But we're not going to do something that's based on Tea Party anti-union principles that are going after you know, our retirement benefits and our retirees' health care. So we've drawn a line in the sand and we've said enough is enough. Is enough. We've already given up above and beyond. And we're not going to give up anymore. Thank you, Alex. Uh, good morning, President Riley. Thank you and the rest of the board members for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, Alex Thompson, I'm the representative organizer for IFPT Local 21 and the co-chair of the Golden Gate Labor Coalition. Um, the board has told the coalition members that it's bargaining with equity and fairness in mind. Um, this fairness has not been shown at the coalition table where we've offered $1.8 million in concessions every year, way beyond the $800,000 in savings called for in the district's 10-year plan. Unfortunately, 
This fairness has also not been shown at the side table negotiations with individual unions. At the last board meeting, I spoke about the district's poor execution and response to the wage survey we bargained in our last contract. And this morning, I want to talk about Local 21's allied unit and the lack of progress at the bargaining table there. To date, the allied side table negotiations, um, we've made over 15 proposals and have not received one written counter proposal from the district. Two of our proposals are for language that virtually every other union at the district already has or the district has already, already agreed to in their contracts. Seniority-based layoffs are the cornerstone of most civil service systems and prevent employers from arbitrarily getting rid of older, more experienced employees. At the side table, the district's lead negotiator actually stated that the district knows that this is a sacred cow for labor, but they don't want to make the changes. The fact is that this is standard language in union contracts, not only at the district, but throughout the country. Agency shop is a right provided to union members by Public Employee Relations Board law. At other employers, Local 21 negotiates the language to be included in the contract, and then the language doesn't take effect until a majority of the members has voted in favor of agency shop. However, the district refuses to include the agency shop language in our contract until after a vote has been taken. Local 21 is the only union that has been forced to do this, and not only is this not practical during the middle of negotiations, but this means that members have to vote on what can, can be a really complicated issue without knowing what the language is ahead of time. The facts clearly show that there's no fairness in the district proposals. I ask that the board move off misguided principles and seriously reconsiders the proposals that we've made at the side tables and at the coalition table so we can settle this contract as soon as possible. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Thomas.